guys, how's it going? I'm getting ready to plant some more hostas in my garden this year. So we're in an area that's right in front of our house. I've got kind of this decorative fence section behind me that is not level anymore. It's kind of settled on one side, but I think it kind of makes it charming. And then I've got a small Hebe fountain right in front of me. And this area has been a little bit of a challenge for me because when we moved in, there were a lot of sun loving perennials here like daylilies and geraniums and things like that. And there still are some like hanging out here and there. So I didn't really like put it together that there's this huge crab apple tree right above us that really does shade this area for most of the day. And at one time it was probably a lot smaller. So all those sun loving perennials did really well. So anyway, this has been a little bit of a process. I planted some Ansonia in here one year and between the gophers eating out the roots and then them not getting enough sun, they kind of fizzled out. So I thought it would be a good idea to come in here and just deck it out with hostas. I started with a few water slide variety hostas last year that are just coming back up. I added in some Hakana Chloa, some hellebores, and I think eventually we'll have this area completely full of shade plants. Um, so these are the hostas I'm planting today, and they are probably one of the more spectacular looking examples I've seen in a nursery can. Um, so the variety is called Coast to Coast, and I think the reason why I love this variety for here, and I've been planning on planting these all winter long, I've been so excited for this, is that they grow about 28 to maybe 30 inches tall and about three feet wide. So they'll be an incredibly stately plant back here. They will really show up. I think they'll hold their own, especially being between two pieces of concrete kind of decorative things. And then also I didn't want to plant anything too tall to where there wasn't enough of a gap between, you know, the, the plant and then the canopy of our tree right above. I need to have some of the airiness between it. And I also still want to be able to see a little bit of the fence from both sides. Um, the other wonderful thing about these is, the, well, the obvious bold you know, boldness of the leaves and they're kind of crinkly. They have kind of a wavy edge, but the color is amazing. So if they get morning sun, they'll be a really bright gold color. Um, if they get full on shade, they'll still be kind of gold, but a little bit more muted. And I think, cause you can see there's some dappled morning sun coming in. I think we'll have amazing color. And that's the fun thing about it because a lot of times when you're gardening in the shade, you end up with a lot of shades of green. So putting something in that has more of a gold tinge to it will really pop. And these are a zone three through nine, so extremely winter hardy, extremely low maintenance, which is what I love about hostas. You pretty much plant them and can kind of leave them alone. When a frost comes in the fall, it will kill the foliage back. And then at that point, you wanna gather it up, make sure that you don't leave any foliage over the winter. Um, that way you won't uh, have any diseases or insects harboring over. And then if you have slugs or snails in your area and they tend to wanna eat up your hostas, it's a really good idea to put down a bait preventatively, which I'm gonna do today because I do deal with slugs a little bit. And the only thing else I think about these that I wanted to point out was they do bloom. This one has an example scared Russell sorry buddy right here we've got a bloom stock coming up actually there are several coming up right now and they have pale purple flowers that attract hummingbirds I think you either love hosta blooms or you don't um, oftentimes I'll leave them for just a little while and then I end up coming in and kind of cleaning them up um, because I like to plant hostas mainly just for the foliage so what I want to do is get these in the ground I'm just going to be using a starter fertilizer in the hole with them the biotone starter that I normally use and then we'll give you kind of an overview look at this whole area <laughs> I think it turned out absolutely wonderful. I'm really excited about having these hostas in here, especially once I see these start to grow and there's a whole bunch of hostas on this side as well. Um, so the only area where I may need to add something extra is maybe back in here at some point. Um, but for now, I think I'm done with this area and we'll just see how it fills in. So this is what I'm gonna be putting around all the hostas today. This is a bug and slug killer. It's an iron phosphate spinosad mix. So it's for organic gardening and it lasts for like a month. So I'll bait around my hostas about once a month. I usually set a reminder in my phone and it keeps them looking really nice. So to do that, I just like sprinkle around the base of the plant, kind of like this all the way around. 
and that's it. So I'm gonna be doing that to all of these here when we're done with the video. So now I kind of just wanna give you a little look around this area. Um, so like I said, the water slide host is here. There is a perennial geranium right here, which I am going to leave. I'm gonna take the daylilies out that are in here, um, but I like this foliage. I think it's nice, even if I don't see any blooms coming on, it doesn't really matter. I think it's pretty either way. Another perennial geranium here. It's beautiful. Look at the foliage on that one. Dark color. This one is actually setting some blooms, which is great. Um, little patch tulips that were here when we moved in. And I've been slowly removing red ones. I'll leave the yellow. And then the front part is kind of an area where I really need to redo. So I need to dig up the lilies and move them. I did plant a conicloa that came out of our window boxes last year, and they're all doing really good. Now they're really late, Russell. They're really late to emerge in the spring, so they're just now starting to push their growth, but they're all looking really good. So that's very, makes me hopeful. And then around this way, we've got more perennial geranium, and then we've got a birch hybrid campanula, which <laughs> blooms little purple blooms. And I really love this plant. And then a few hellebores here, and then more of the Hakanakloa, which you can see right there. And then there's some more over on this side here. Um, so anyway, that is this area. And if we back up, this crab apple is absolutely glorious right now. It's got the biggest white blooms on it. I absolutely love this tree because it's upright, but it still has a little bit of a weeping habit to it, which is perfect for the fountain, perfect structure for the fence. It's just a really neat area. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. Just wanted to show you these hostas going in and then we will have more progress updates as the season progresses. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.